and here's what's interesting. There are certain things that we just experience in our lives and never even think to question it. Ask a simple question, why does ice float? Have you ever asked that? Usually when you cool something down, it shrinks. Okay, it becomes more dense. So it becomes more dense. And so you would think that a cooler version of some liquid would be, you know, if you shrink the same mass down to a smaller volume, it's more dense, then all ice cubes would sink to the bottom of your glass. So a peculiar thing happens to water when it changes state. Okay, a change of state means you go from liquid to solid, solid to gas, gas. So we have water and there it is. When it freezes, the water molecule, in order to freeze, takes up more volume than does the water molecule in a liquid state. So the water expands by about 10%, okay? And roughly, you can think about that as if you, are, if you expand 10% and you go back into your liquid, you will bob with about 10% of your volume above the water and 90% below. So just put, put an ice cube in your glass. It's easier to see this if it's in a cube shape rather than in those crescent shapes or other things. But if you take a cube and put it in there, 10% will be above the water and 90% will be below. Now, here's an interesting fact. If you take that same glass of water with that one ice cube in it and fill it as much as you possibly can so that not another drop can go in it without spilling over the edge. If you do that, okay, the ice will be sitting above that level, above the lip of the glass. And you might be worried, oh my gosh, I better get a coaster because when this melts, it's gonna overflow. But no, when it melts, it's gonna take up the volume that it's already displacing in the water itself and it's not gonna get any higher than it currently is. This is why the Arctic ice sheets, this ice that is floating on the water, in the future, where global warming melts the entire northern cap, when that happens, it will not, that alone will not increase the sea levels of the world. Because the ice is already floating in water. The ice you need to worry about is the ice that's on land. The runoff, okay, that ice, you melt that's that, you're directly adding water, con that's on Greenland and in primarily Greenland and Antarctica. So that yeah. then starts flooding the oceans and raising raising the sea level. If you do that, then the water level will go up to the left elbow of the Statue of Liberty. And yeah, and that basically you lose Manhattan and basically every other coastal city of which where, where you find most of the great cities of the world are on the water's edge. So anyhow, so, so, so that's why ice floats, but there's more going on here. You could delay the freezing of the ice. It freezes at 32 degrees or zero degrees Celsius. You can make it freeze at like one degree below zero <clears throat> if you put it under pressure. So it gets colder and it says, I want to freeze. I have to get bigger. I have to get bigger. I'm not letting you. So then it doesn't, it doesn't change the state. Okay. But if you keep taking the temperature lower and lower under pressure, the ice says, the ice says, F it. okay. And I will expand no matter what you're doing and boom, pipes break. So it would be very hard for ice at 32 degrees to break a pipe because the pipes are made of typically they're made of copper or some strong metal and so it'll keep it squeezed down and it say no you're not freezing at 30 no i'm not going to let you freeze at 30 degrees no not at 29 oh 25 degrees pow and it and it is stronger than the pipes and you just yeah. break the pipes and by the way at that moment all the pipes are frozen there's no leakage when do you have leakage when the temperature goes up again, and then the ice melts out of the path, and then the water flies. So the, 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 the act of broken pipes, in most cases, is not the moment where you get the leak. Because the ice is there. The ice is there plugging the pipes. It's later on when the ice moves out of the way. So the, this is the power of freezing ice. Well, how about the density of water just as water? Does it change density? Yes, it does, okay? As you cool water, it takes up slightly less and less volume. Hardly noticeable if you're just swimming in it or you just look at it. And by the, if you heat water, it takes up slightly more volume. And a lot of the increased sea level rise in the future of global warming is simply because the oceans are warmer. 
and they're warmer, they, they take up, uh, you know, let's say it's 1% more depth. But what is 1% more depth in the middle of the ocean where it's three miles deep, okay? If it's 1% more depth, by the time you get to the shoreline, you have flooding. So let's cool the water. It gets colder and colder and colder. It, it begins to shrink. Well, at some point that has to turn around because eventually it's going to become ice where it's bigger. There is a point where ice is at its densest and it's three degrees Celsius. Okay, so you cool water at the surface. It's denser than the water below it and so that cool water drops and it goes to the bottom. Okay, and it stays there. You keep trying to cool water at the top and it goes down to the bottom. But what happens now you're cooling water, now the water is two degrees Celsius or one degree Celsius. It begins to stay on top. Then it hits zero degrees Celsius, it freezes on top keeping the three degree water at the bottom, preserving all aquatic life over the winter time. If ice sank, oh my gosh, you would freeze lakes from the bottom up and slowly but surely all the fish would be swimming in an ever thinner layer of water until you just go in and scoop them all up and that's the last fish that would ever exist in that lake. So this feature of water protects life over the winter, aquatic life over the winter. And once you form the ice layer on the top, it actually insulates the bottom. You get really cold on top, but that does that, how long will that take to transmit through a thick layer of ice? It takes a long time. By then, it's daytime compared to night, or spring has come, and so you rarely ever do you end up freezing an entire lake. And it's because yeah. of this property of water that ice floats, that ice is less dense than water. One other thing, it's what enables you to ice skate, okay? Because the reverse is true. So I, if I have an ice cube and it's sitting at, let's say, 30 degrees and it's frozen, so minus one, let's say, Celsius, if I squeeze it, if I squeeze it under pressure, I'm trying to put it into a smaller volume. Ice won't let you do that. But if I press it really hard, what's the only way the ice can respond to you to go into a smaller volume? It's gotta become water. Um, when you're skating on ice, okay, the blade is the way it's, it's sharpened is it has a very sharp edge on one side and on the other, on right. the left and on the right. So you go on an edge and you, skaters know about this, or on the inside edge or on the outside edge. That is, is a lot of pressure. That pressure is so high that it actually melts the ice in place and the skate glides on a bead of water. So that's, that's it. Ice is less dense than water.